crucial message for Democrats as they craft their 2020 strategy, and it's health care, health care, health care. 62% of Americans rank health care as the first or second most important issue facing our country today, including a 30% plurality of Republicans. That's according to Axios and a new survey by Real Clear Opinion Research. And while President Trump and Republicans have struggled to craft a plan beyond replacing Obamacare with something, anything else, House Democrats are pushing ahead with their plan to develop a single-payer Medicare for All plan. Joining me now, Kentucky Democratic Congressman John, Ro J John Yarmuth. He is the chairman of the Budget Committee. Congressman, thank you very much for being here. Oh, good to be with you, Casey. Uh, so you are holding a hearing tomorrow on the logistics of a single-payer system, and this has really begun to dominate the debate in the 2020 Democratic primary, particularly this question about what happens to private insurance. What, in your view, is the path that the country should take, uh, and is it too much too fast to throw people off private insurance in four years or less, as, as Bernie Sanders' plan calls for? Well, that's one of the issues that we'll be talking about tomorrow. When I assumed the uh, chairmanship of the Budget Committee, I asked the Congressional Budget Office to develop a report of all the issues that had to be resolved when you were trying to figure out how to construct a single-payer or Medicare-for-all system. Uh, the the uh, role, of, if any, of private insurance is certainly one of those issues, as is, for instance, what, what uh, benefits would be covered, uh, who would be eligible, whether you'd uh, make non-citizens eligible as well as citizens who would actually administer the plan would it be the federal government would it be some hybrid of the federal government and the state or would it be a contract with uh, insurance companies so there are just a multitude of questions that need to be resolved as you work toward developing the system and that's what we're going to yeah. talk about tomorrow all right, fair enough. One other major issue facing uh, all of you, of course, is what we've been talking about uh, throughout this hour, and that is the question of impeaching the president of the United States, or at least starting those proceedings. We heard from the Senate Majority Leader, uh, Mitch McConnell, just a couple minutes ago on this. I want to show uh, our viewers that, and then we'll talk about it. You know, my view, the, the, the case is closed. The House can do whatever they choose to. Uh, and. We'll watch them. You all watch them. It produces a lot of stories. Uh, my impression is that the leadership in the House is not so keen on that option and doesn't think the business of presidential harassment is actually a great way for them to go in uh, to the 2020 election. But it's really up to the House. We'll see what happens. So Mitch McConnell saying case closed, uh, that approach is, is what Nancy Pelosi is watching. She has said all along that she needs Republicans in the Senate to get on board to make an impeachment process worthwhile. What's your view? Do you think impeachment proceedings should start now? I think that we're headed down a road where impeachment proceedings become inevitable. And, um, you know, Mitch engages in a lot of wishful thinking, and he wishes the case were closed. It's not closed. As a matter of fact, the Mueller report itself didn't close it. It just said basically that they couldn't prosecute uh, President Trump on obstruction of justice charges. I talked to a federal, a former federal prosecutor who said he prosecuted dozens of obstruction cases. He'd never had as much evidence than exists in the Mueller report. So the, the, okay. the problem is we've, we've put a lot of stock in the Mueller report. There are a lot of other issues out there involving uh, presidential behavior. And I think we do need to go through this investigative process because there may be a, a, a lot of things, uh, additional things that we need to hold the president accountable for. Okay, and finally, sir, uh, you, uh, as we mentioned at the top, the chairman of the Budget Committee, we are picking up some uh, early reporting that you may be about to reach a, a broad fiscal deal that could uh, potentially set uh, budget numbers for two years, lift the debt ceiling, among other things. Uh, do you think that that's a real possibility that uh, leaders are about to strike some sort of grand uh, budget deal, or do you think that talk is premature? No, I think, I've always said that I think it would be relatively easy for us to get a deal with the Senate. I know Mitch has told me he wants a two-year deal. We want a two-year deal. The wild card has always been what the president uh, would accept. Uh, and there was some thought that he might want to play uh, brinkmanship uh, going to the last minute and then threaten to shut down in order to get a deal where he could get closer to his budget submission. Uh, I don't think anybody on the Hill wants to play that game, particularly going into an election year. So I'm actually pretty optimistic that 
that uh, that uh, we can reach a deal. And I know that uh, Republican members have been pressuring the White House pretty uh, intensely over the last few days, trying to get them to you go along with the two-year deal. You think we could see an announcement this week? Could we see an announcement um, this week, quickly, sir? You know, I, I heard the same rumor that you probably just did, that, uh, that Mitch says there may be a deal today. I hope that's the case. It would be good to get some certainty for two years in, in federal expenditures. All right, Budget Chairman John Yarmuth, thank you very much, sir. Great to have you on the program. Thanks, Casey. Thank you.